Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zon Ta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to import data into Autodesk Revit. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zon Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Autodesk Revit 2017 and I, previously I created a video on how to export data out of Revit. Now this one is actually on how to insert different types of data into Revit. So in order to insert any content into Revit, we can go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. And you'll notice here you have a Link panel, you have an Import panel, Load from a Library panel, and an Autodesk Seek panel. I'll work from the left and work my way towards the right. The first object and type that you have to import is obviously another linked Revit file. So if you click Link Revit, it'll ask you to open up a particular Revit file. And you can select something, for example this, and hit Open and it will go through and it will try to link the file. I'm going to cancel this link so that we won't actually process that command. The second type of uh, information that you can insert into a Revit model is an IFC. IFC again stands for Industry Foundation Class and if you select it, it'll ask you to find it, select the file, and click Open. The third is linking a CAD file. So if I click Link CAD it'll open this window and it'll ask you to pick the CAD file. When you are selecting the CAD file to bring in, ensure that the 3D, the, the current view that you have in Revit is the view that you want to bring it into. So for example, if the CAD file is a 2D floor plan, you'll want to be in a 2D floor plan view in Revit as the current view. You'll select the file only single click, don't double click. If you double click, all the information that is down here in the lower left, um, in the lower quadrant of the dialog box is what's going to take effect. So single click so that you can go ahead and double check the settings that you need. Uh, next, you can also bring in a DWF markup set. So again, DWF is very similar to PDF or Adobe, but it's actually uh, DWF is for Autodesk. And so you can, again, just pick the DWF file that you want and click Open, and that information should come in. You can also insert a decal, in either placing a decal or looking at the decal types. Um, a decal type, if you select that, you'll see that you can make as many as you need, and you can associate an image file to it, and it'll help you manipulate things such as brightness, reflectivity, transparency, so on and so forth. Uh, why do we use decal types instead of just inserting an image? Uh, if you just use the insert image command, it's just a static image. You really can't do much with it other than manipulate the size of it. Whereas with uh, the decal, you can asso associate the image to the decal and adjust all of this information here. Um, the next is you can insert a point cloud file and you just select that and pick the point cloud file that you need and then click uh, open. Also double check the positioning as well because you have the ability to specify automatic center to center, meaning the center of the point cloud file versus the center of the Revit file. This is with the understanding you're going to move it anyway because typically the centers of those two file types isn't the same. You can then specify automatic origin to origin, which uh, is really you know 000 of the point cloud uh, and 000 of the Revit model. And typically if you choose origin to origin, it is pinned down. And then lastly is by shared coordinates. You can click Manage Links to open up the Manage Links window. And here you can control and take a look at what file and file types have been imported in and linked in. And you control and see the status and the reference type, things like that. And then you have all the commands down here to work with for those particular objects. You can import a CAD file. So the difference between a linking and a importing a CAD file is the options within the dialog box are the same, but the link actually controls the ability for you to update the AutoCAD file outside of Revit. And then once that change is saved, uh, all you have to do is reload latest of the CAD file um, and it will automatically update within the Revit file. You can import a GBXML file. So again, a GBXML file is for the purposes of energy analysis. Um, and so if you already have a GBXML file saved somewhere, you can just click import and it'll ask you for that file. And again, single click and double check your settings and click open. You can also insert from another Revit file any views 
or 2D elements from file. So for example, if I click Insert Views from File, it'll ask me to select a file. I can go over to my list of Revit files, and I'll pick something, say this one, and hit Open. What ends up happening is if the file has to be upgraded, it'll be upgraded, and it will list in a dialog box all the different views that you can bring in. For example, drafting views, schedules, things like that. I'm going to cancel this so again we don't actually initiate the command. And then you also have manage images. So if you have images already in place, you can select this. And in the same vein as managing links, the manage image window gives you the ability to see what images that you have inserted and how many there are. And if you want to, you can add more or delete. If you delete from this dialog box, the image will go and be removed from your Revit model and it won't show up anywhere in the model again. And then you obviously can load another family from uh, another Revit file or another location and it just comes in. You can load as a group and what that means is that it takes the Revit file that you pick from this dialog box here and inserts it and turns it into a group. A group in Revit is very similar to a block in AutoCAD. Uh, and it's basically just a whole bunch of 3D objects and or 2D objects uh, grouped together as a single entity. And then lastly, under Autodesk Seek, you can click inside this field and type whatever you want, say, uh, bike rack. And when you do this, it will open up the dialog box for your browser, and you'll see it'll give you the content that you need for you to download. And so those are all the different methods for you to insert content into your Revit model. Thank you very much for watching.